Hello students. Today's topic is physical mapping by means of radiation hybrid mapping and sequence tagged site mapping. In today's session, I'll talk about radiation hybrid mapping and sequence tagged site mapping. Sequence stacked sites or STS. These are short unique segments of DNA around 200 to 500 base pair length. The concept of STS was first introduced by Olson and his group in 1989. These STS markers are PCR based co-dominant markers. Since these are unique markers found in the entire genome prior knowledge of DNA sequence should be known. STS markers could be a unique sequence of microsatellite, ISSR, CAPS, etc. The markers have long primer sequences, hence have high reproducibility. The common sources of STS mapping is express sequence tag or ESTS, SSLPs or simple sequence length polymorphisms and random genomic sequences. The ESTs are obtained from cDNA libraries. The idea behind this is that the particular gene is unique in the genome and not a member of a gene family. SSLPs. This is nothing but an array of repeated sequences. I have discussed about it earlier. For STS, unique SSLP sequences are selected. Third, random unique genome sequences are obtained from database or cloned libraries. Steps for STS content map. The first step includes fragmentation of DNA using rare cutting enzymes to produce large DNA fragments. For this, the entire genome can be used or a particular selected chromosome. Chromosome separation can be achieved by flow cytometer. Next step is to create the fragment library. Example, in a YAC chromosome. It could be for the whole genome or chromosome. Then it is followed by clone identification. It is done by means of using unique STS markers. It could be done in two ways, clone fingerprinting method and chromosome walking. In clone fingerprinting method, the clones are identified based on common restriction fragment. In case of chromosome walking, the overlapping clones are identified based on hybridization of two overlapping clones to a particular STS marker. This is then followed by preparation of STS content map. The final step is preparation of STS content map. This is arranging of overlapping fragments based on the presence or absence of a signal for a particular probe. Now here in the first diagram, shows a DNA profile using clone fingerprinting method. Here in well 2 and 3 matching bands are seen. This is used to construct the consensus map. All the overlapping fragments are then arranged together to form the final STS content map. STS are mapped relative to each other using linkage analysis on East artificial chromosome clones or in radiation hybrid cells. This figure represents as to how the whole genome can be mapped. Radiation hybrid mapping. The concept of radiation hybrid cells was first put forward by Stephen Goss and Henry Harris. They observed that 
X-ray irradiated human cells could be fused with normal hamster cells to create hybrids called radiation hybrids. These hybrids contain small fragments of human chromosome along with hamster genome and expressed human proteins. However, with time, many of these human chromosomes got lost and only a few could be retained in the hybrid. Steps in radiation hybrid mapping. First, irradiation of human fibroblast cells using X-rays, followed by fusion of these irradiated human cells with normal rodent cells or hamster cells. Selection of fused or hybrid cells on hat media, followed by identification of these cells by PCR amplification with specific primers. This is then followed by the construction of radiation hybrid map. Radiation hybrid mapping steps in detail. First, the human cells are exposed to around 3000 to 8000 rad of X-ray. The length of the fragmented DNA depends upon the dosage, that is length of time of exposure and the amount. Higher the dosage, smaller the fragment of DNA. Next, the irradiated human cells are fused with normal rodent or hamster cells. Fusion is facilitated by means of polyethylene glycol or by infection with Sendai virus. For selection of hybrids, the hybrid cell lines and human cell lines used for fusion should either be thymidine kinase or hypoxanthin guanoside phosphoriboside transferase deficient, that is HPRT deficient. This helps in selection of hybrids when grown in HAT media, that is hypoxanthine aminopterin thymidine media. In the figure here, the human cells used are HPRT deficient while the hamster cells are thymidine kinase deficient. Not all hamster cells take the human chromosomes on fusion. The hybrid cells are screened with HAT media. The collection of these cells are called radiation hybrid panel. They may contain human chromosome fragments of 5 to 10 MB in size. The human DNA in the radiation hybrid is analyzed for gene or DNA markers. Closer the two markers or genes are, they are more likely to be linked to each other. The radiation hybrid markers can also be used in STS mapping. The figure here shows irradiated human cells fused with hamster cells. In the first figure, the radiation hybrid panel obtained is from the whole genome. Note, the fragments of chromosomes that are shown in different colors are randomly integrated into the hamster genome. Different hybrids are a combination of different chromosomal segments. In figure 2, a single chromosome is irradiated and then fused to hamster cells. In such cases, first the chromosomes are sorted and selected by flow cytometry technique. The selected chromosomes are then stably propagated in rodent cells. These rodent cells are then irradiated and fused with the hamster cells to give radiation hybrid cells. The hybrid hamster cells obtained after selection would contain either human or mouse chromosome fragments or a mixture of both. The ones containing human DNA can be identified by using probes made of repeated sequences like sine and ALU. Selection of radiation hybrids. 
selection of radiation hybrid is done in hat selection media that is a media supplemented with hypoxanthin aminopterin and thymidine the principle behind this mode of selection is as follows nucleotide synthesis in cell occurs through two pathways the de novo pathway and the salvage pathway in de novo synthesis nucleotide synthesis occurs through organic molecules while the salvage pathway utilizes nucleotide precursors for nucleotide synthesis the salvage pathway is followed only when the de novo pathway is inhibited the de novo pathway can be inhibited by certain anti metabolites like aminopterin or by mutation both the pathways involve enzymes among them two of the enzymes required for the salvage pathway are hprt and tk or thymidine kinase as shown in the figure at the extreme right deletions or mutations affect the thymidine kinase and hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase gene when cells are grown in a media containing hypoxanthine aminopterin and thymidine that is hat media hypoxanthine and thymidine are precursors in salvage pathway and aminopterin are inhibitors of de novo synthesis in the present situation for the creation of hybrid lines the human cells are hprt minus while the hamster cells are thymidine kinase deficient the de novo synthesis in the cells are inhibited by aminopterin the cells need to utilize the salvage pathway to survive the human cells fail to grow because of hprt enzyme deficiency that is hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase the hamster cells fail to survive because these cells do not synthesize thymidine kinase only the hybrid cells grow in hat media as they can express the tk or thymidine kinase enzyme from hamster chromosomes and hprt from the human chromosomes thus the radiation hybrid cells are selected from the hat media after obtaining the radiation hybrid panel the rh cell lines are examined for the presence of sts markers the relative location of sts markers and their overlapping clones are identified in instances where sts content mapping is not possible the linkage between two markers in the rh hybrids are determined the principle used here is similar to that of linkage map here instead of recombination percentage the breakage percentage is calculated the lod score is then calculated and the order and distance between the markers can be mapped the table here highlights the comparison between the different mapping method studies significance of mapping genome mapping of genome is a prerequisite to understand the functioning of human genome it helps to understand the expression and regulation of certain genes for expression of certain traits mapping helps in analysis of segregation of genetic human diseases or rare genetic disorders it helps to plan different methods for gene therapy the genetic and physical maps do differ in the relative distances and even in position of genes on chromosomes the physical map is considered to be more correct or more precise 
Thank you.